salvation. Say me. Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my true care. Jesus is my true. Jesus is my peace. Your peace, our peace. Jesus is my peace. I believe, I believe, I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. Receive revelation. Receive understanding. I receive all the fullness. I fully trust Him. I fully trust. I believe, I believe, I believe the word of God. Receive revelation. I receive revelation. I receive all the fullness. I fully trust Him. I fully trust. I will never, 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 never. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I never, 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 I will never, no, never, never, never be the same. I will never, no, never, 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 I will never, 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 never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power, I take on the shield. I take on the shield of faith. I take on the sword of the Spirit. I take on the sword of the Spirit. I lead by the word of God. 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 I would never, never, never be the same. I would never, never, never be the same. I would never, never, never be the same. With the Holy Ghost power. I would never, never, never. I would never, 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 never. Sickness, redeemed from death, redeemed from sin, by the power of the Holy Ghost, it's your season to win. Take your healing, take your freedom, take your favor. Ay, 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 ay. Give the Lord a shout. Shakalata pato melina ma, egelina mambra, agalina mambro gada zakele de brede kegele de boja kaya nama. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, this morning that we have access into the deep things of God by the Holy Ghost, comparing spiritual with spiritual. Thank you that the eyes of each one's understanding is flooded with light today. Your people are built up, equipped, edified. Jesus is glorified. We decree that whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Sickness and disease terminated. And we rejoice that by the end of this service, we'll all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our feet together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of, God. I am born of the world. The, the word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, 
I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of our social media community, family and friends. We love you guys. We're so glad you're here again. And we want to welcome all of the Aquaibom State community that are connected to this service right now, wherever you're listening to the sound of my voice around the state. I'd like you to do me a favor. Please call somebody. Call somebody at home. Call somebody in the car. Call your neighbor. Ask them to tune in. The life of God is flowing through the airwaves. It's going to be an exciting service. Social media community, like you've always done, help me. Let's get this gospel to the ends of the earth. Share the video. Share with all the groups on your page because what I'm about to share is very critical. Help us reach people. Tag some people. You know, put the video on monogram, telegram. Put them on WhatsApp groups. Let's get to the ends of the earth with the truth of Jesus Christ. And we love you guys. We're glad you're here. All our campuses around the world. I'm so glad to see every one of you. I'm so excited. Today makes our potato God church one year since it's been in operation and we love you guys what a joy to see what God is doing in the city of Port Harcourt we're so excited praise the Lord all right grab your pen your Bible your notebook you can be seated with your sweet smart self let's get in the world amen <clears throat> it's still our week of um, training evangelism and discipleship and in the first service this morning I started talking about why and how believers give Please, if you are not here in the first service, I beg of you. If I have to beg you, I will beg you. I beg of you, get the CD, go and listen to it because I laid some foundation and I dealt with a number of things that if you do not understand, you may be having questions from the things I may teach in this service. We want to look at the New Testament spirit of generosity. New Testament spirit of generosity. Because, you know, as I grew up, like I said in the first service, as a young boy, I grew up with my parents. Every time we go to church, they will give us offering. And they will just say, put, put the offering. That's all we were taught to do. We take offering, we go to church, we put it in the offering basket. That's all. We were never promised anything. We just give because we give. And then as a naughty little boy, sometimes when, I, when they give us the money, I will remove a little, put it in my pocket for biscuit. And then I'll put the other one in the offering. And then my mother used to look and make sure I came to the offering basket. But I knew in my mind that she wouldn't know how much I put inside. You know, but we just gave and we grew up giving and we learned to give. That's how I grew up as a Christian. I grew up just giving. I didn't give because I was expecting something. But as I joined the ministry and I began to preach the gospel of Christ, I came across some of the best preachers in the world who mentored me back in those days. And they began to talk things like, give for a reward, sow a seed for a breakthrough. Give so that you can get. They began to teach those kind of gospels. And then people were giving testimonies. And it looked like it was working. And as a young preacher coming up into the ministry, I want to do what is working. So I started preaching the same thing as everybody was preaching. And that, that, that shade of the gospel is not just evil, it's very wrong. It's, 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 it's a corruption of the gospel. I preached that for quite a number of years, you know. And, uh, but I thank God that because I was sincerely preaching it, I didn't know any better. That's what I knew. And I preached with it all my life. But then I got to a point where I was feeling empty. Is that all that there is to the gospel? Every time we come to church, we teach you how to give. Then we collect the offering. We pray for you. You go. What kind of life is that? And then I began to say to myself, if, if all the gospel is just to be collecting money, why don't I just leave ministry and go and do business proper? Where I will really make the money. Why should I be on the pulpit? And every time I have to wow people, you know, um, look for how to massage people's emotions, promise them things that I'm not even sure of myself, just to collect the monies. I got fed up. And I said, you know what? If that's all that there is to the gospel, I better just quit because it's not worth it at all. And I discussed with mama. Mama says she too, she's asking herself the same questions. Is the whole of Christianity just about money, 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 collect, collect, collect? There must be more to it. You know, so I took off time, you know, the story. And the rest is history. And the Lord opened my eyes. And I began to see the truth of the gospel. And that is what I preach today. So today we want to look at that subject a little bit. And let me also mention, you know, as a pastor... Um, uh, many pastors think the reason why I'm preaching this is because I have made too much money. Now that I've made money, I now want to destroy the business for other people. Well, sorry, sir. That's not why. 
I am not, I am not in any way as a pastor looking for how to make things difficult. If you want to keep collecting money and lying to people and deceiving to people, I have not stopped you. I didn't come to your church to preach what I am preaching. I am preaching in my church. I am preaching to my congregation. I am speaking to those who follow this ministry. So if by any reason you feel like I, you are angry with me, you don't have to listen. You can off the radio. You can switch your TV off. You can actually shut down. You don't have to be part of this. But I will not lie to the people of God in a bid to collect their money. I would rather not have money and tell the truth because one day I will stand before Jesus to give account of everything I have taught, everything I have preached, whether I lied to you or I told you the truth. I am responsible for it and I will give account. And I will not open my two eyes and lie to you just to collect money that the moment I stop breathing, it ends its value. I'm a man of eternal value and I cannot compromise the truth of the gospel. Is that clear now? All right, I needed to say that. Now, so as I grew, I got into that, you know, that, that shade of the gospel where they teach give and it shall be given. You know, Brother Paul warns us of that gospel in Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Galatians chapter 1 verse number 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. So there is a gospel called another gospel. Is the word eteros. Eteros. Another. Another. All right. Another gospel. It simply means it will look like the gospel, but it is not the gospel. And those, most of the people who preach this another gospel, this materialistic gospel, they quote scriptures. That is where the dilemma is. They quote scriptures. But remember, brother Paul admonished a young preacher by the name Timothy. And he said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That word rightly dividing is the word ototomio. That means scriptures must be rightly divided in the light of Christ. Scriptures must be rightly divided in the light of Christ. I have always said this to you. A scripture can never mean today what it never meant when it was first written. A scripture can never mean today what it never meant when it was first written. That is, in other words, you can never arrive at the truth when you, you know, when you take a scripture out of context. You can never arrive at the truth when you take a scripture out of context. No matter how many results you get from it. The truth of the matter is, it doesn't become true because you have a result. It doesn't become true because you have a result. Because some of the people that oppose me, their argument is, when we ask people to give and they give, they have testimonies. But let us think objectively. A pastor asks the church to give, God will multiply it. And only three people give testimony out of 1,000. Is God partial? Is God partial? If it is true, if that principle is true, why is everybody in the church not having the testimony? So, experience does not validate truth. It is true because it is true, irrespective of result or no result. Are we in the building? So, and many people, that's their argument. Just like if you go to a native doctor and they give you a charm, it works. But the fact that the charm works, does it make it the truth? No. You go to a soothsayer, a diviner, and they give you something and it works. The fact that it works, does it make it genuine? No. So it is not truth because you had result. It is only truth because it is truth. And remember, you can never get truth out of a lie. You can never get the truth out of a lie. Any scripture that is not rightly divided. Once a preacher is preaching from a scripture that is not rightly divided, he is preaching a lie. He is preaching a lie. And it's easy to take any scripture out of context. For example, there's a scripture in Deuteronomy we were taught and we used to use it. The Lord God of my fathers make you a thousand times more than you've ever been. Then when we quote that scripture, we'll ask you to sow a seed of a thousand more. That is, it must be in thousands. Any money you're giving must be in thousands so that God can make you a thousand more. Now that scripture, that's not what he's talking about. It was just a prayer of Moses for the children of Israel. His desire for them. It's not as a result of their giving. It's just the wish of a father over his people. Yet preachers have twisted that to a scripture for collecting thousands. 
Are you following now? So you can't get the truth out of a lie. You cannot get the truth out of a lie. Listen carefully. An experience does not validate a lie. If it is a lie, it's a lie. So we want to look at why we give. I did a lot of exegesis in the first service and you need to get the material. Now Acts chapter 8 is the scripture from where we are quoting. Acts chapter 8 from verse 9. I'm going to read quickly. Acts 8, 9 to 11. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great man. So somebody deceived an entire city, a sorcerer, a native doctor, deceived a whole city like Uyo, like a choir bomb as a whole state. And everybody was looking up to him like he was a great man, but they didn't know that he was a sorcerer. He was a native doctor. He was a juju priest. They didn't know that he was a soothsayer, a diviner. They didn't know that all those things he uses as power, he gets them from necromancing, interfacing with the spirit of the dead, dead spirits. You know, a, a particular man who got born again through my preaching told me he used to sleep in graveyards. He used to sleep in graveyard for months, seeking power, fasting in graveyard alone in the night seeking for power until he encountered my teaching then he discovered this is where the real power is things that people do things that people do and the end the, the intent is to collect money the intent is for money are you understanding the intent is for money so this guy was a sorcerer a native doctor who was held a whole city spellbound. Look at verse 10. Verse 10 quickly. <clears throat> Acts 18. To whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. Everybody respected him. Next verse. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched the whole city with sorceries, with witchcraft. So people can be respected over time because of witchcraft, sorcery, necromancy, diabolical power, demonic hold. And today, the pulpit is not exempted. There are a lot of them behind the pulpit wearing suit and tie. And they are operating with diabolical power. And the gullible audience don't know the difference because nobody has taught them the gospel. The only way you can know the difference between a man of God and a native doctor is through the preaching. When you are taught the word, when you are taught the message, the moment you have the soundness of the message, when you see a man of God, you will know. When you, know, when you see a diabolical man, you will know. The acid test is the word of God. The word of God. That's why I spend time teaching you and teaching you and teaching you because we live in perilous times. And I don't want anybody under my spiritual oversight to be used for experiment. I don't want anybody under my tutelage to be used by, by, by charlatans for their personal gains. Look at verse 12 to 13. 12 to 13. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. 13. Then Simon himself, the sorcerer, believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Next verse. So he believed, alright? Now, please quickly, because of time, move to verse 18, because of time. So this native doctor saw the genuine and he surrendered. Verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Next verse. Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay my hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. That is what today in the prosperity gospel they brand as sow a seed to tap into grace. Sow a seed for a breakthrough. Your offering will remove your suffering. If you don't tight, it will be tight. The heavier your sacrifice, the weightier your breakthrough. All that is fraud. This is the same thing the sorcerer did. The sorcerer came to Peter and said, I want the power. Here is a bag of money. I have brought seed. Give me the power. I want to tap. 
That's the same thing. And the reason why the sorcerer did it is because that is how they function in the kingdom of darkness. You give them something for them to give you something. White fowl. White fowl. Red fowl. Lizard without legs. Why? Because it's a foul spirit you are about to contract. Then when you give them those things, they now give you something in exchange. Then, so people now bring that native doctorism mentality onto God. God, if you don't give God, God cannot give you. Who told you? If you don't tight, it will be tight. Who told you? Who told you? But when scriptures are not properly divided, the Bible can be used to say anything you want to say. But when it is rightly divided, then you find the truth of the gospel. Are we teaching here? So he now brought money and said, give me the power of God. Take money. Look at that verse 19 again. Verse 19. But Peter said unto him, sorry, verse 20. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You have taught you can buy grace. You don't buy grace. Any grace that can be bought is not grace. Grace means you can't buy it. Grace means you can't afford it. Grace means you don't deserve it. So therefore, since you don't qualify for it, somebody gave it to you for free. So you can't tap grace by money. Any grace you tap with money is fake grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus cannot be bought. Peter said, go and perish. You can't buy a wife with money. You can't buy a miracle with money. The power of God is freely given. We don't buy it. And the reason why the sorcerer behaved like that is because he's used to doing it in his sorcery. Are we following here? He said, go and perish. You can't buy the grace of God with money. And some of us, that, was, that has been our mentality. Every time we need something from God, we have to look for something to give so that God can give us. And we have rubbish the character of God. Our God is not for sale. My father is not in a transaction. When you have to give to God to get, that's a transaction. That is not giving. In generosity, you give expecting nothing. In generosity, you just give. You just give. Why do I give? Because I want to give. And we took time to deal with the character of God in the first service. Like I said, get the material, it will help you. We took time to look at God's forgiveness. We took time to look at Luke chapter 6 verse, I mean 7 verse 38. You know, I mean 6 verse 38. We took time to look at a number of things, James, Corinthians in the first service. And I just want to move, I want to move quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 now. <clears throat> Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Next verse. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Next verse. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power. They were willing of themselves. Next verse. Praying us with much entreaty that we will receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Next verse. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They prayed that we should collect. Their salary has not been paid, but they gave. They gave what they had. And they went beyond what they had. They borrowed to give. Not expecting anything in report, return. But to support the work of God. He said there is grace on the churches of Macedonia. What is grace? Grace means I deprive myself so you can be better. I deprive myself to enrich you. What is the grace of Jesus? He was rich. He became poor. That we might be rich. So he deprived himself to make us better. That's grace. So grace is when I deprive myself to give so you can be better. Not expecting anything in return. That's generosity. Generosity is when I give without any demand. Transaction is when I give and I expect a return. 
That's the difference. So this church in Macedonia was a very exemplary in the grace of giving. So you don't give now because you have an increase in your business. You give even when there is no increase. You give even when you have little. You don't wait to have much to give because a man that cannot give little cannot give much. So it has to do with conviction, not convenience. It has to do with conviction, not convenience. You give because it is the culture of the believer. It is in the church that those who don't have enough still give to those who don't have enough. I don't have enough, but I give to you who don't have enough because what I have is more than what you have. We give because we give. That's the spirit. That's the culture. So they were not giving out of convenience. They were giving out of conviction. This church was a poor church. Deep poverty. Yet they gave. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which caused through us thanksgiving to God. The word bountifulness there is the word haplotis. Hap lotus hap lotus it means that is sincerity it means simplicity it means generosity look at second corinthians chapter 9 verse 13 second corinthians 9 13 whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify god for your professed subjection unto the gospel of christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all liberal distribution that is you are giving without expecting anything in return you are giving generously without expecting anything in return now look at ephesians chapter 6 verse 5 brother paul speaking to the church at ephesus servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of heart as unto Christ. The word singleness there means liberality, sincerity, or generosity. Look at verse 6 and 7 of Ephesians 6. Not with eye service as men please us, but as a servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not unto men. The same thing in Colossians 3.22. You can write down for further study. So, as believers, how do we give? We give generously. We give with generosity. We are liberal. That means we are not giving in response to something. Neither are we giving with a condition that we will get something or with the promise of a benefit. We are not giving with a condition. So what kind of giving does our father do? Our father gives liberally. Our father gives generously. Our father gives without upbraiding. He does not find fault. He just gives. Our father just gives. And we too ought to give like our father. Am I teaching good? Does God give to all men? Good and bad? Yes. So, does God select who to give to? No. no. Does he give an expectation for a return? No. no. Why? Because he is liberal. Now, there are those who didn't even think, don't, don't even thank him at all. Yet he gives to them. They say there is no God and they are making money. They say God, get out and they are succeeding why because god is generous he gives to everybody he makes the sun to shine on the good and on the bad he makes the rain to fall on the evil and on the righteous god does not select you to give he gives because that's his character are we in the building he gives because that is his character look at first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 Brother Paul admonishing the church that Timothy pastor. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, 
nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. All things to enjoy. That's why he says, who gives unto all freely? All, not only believers. God gives to all. One of the lies of this materialistic gospel or one of the lies of this another gospel to say that people become wealthy when they give is just a lie. In fact, it's a big lie because there's no scripture for it that big people became wealthy by giving. There's no scripture like that. It's not in the Bible. That people became wealthy by giving. I know somebody said, what about Solomon? Solomon offered to God a thousand bond offering. And in that night, God blessed him. Are you thinking straight? Do you know who Solomon was? Solomon was a king. All the wealth of the land was his. He didn't need to get to give to God to get anything. He's a king over the land. Solomon. And he was shrewd. He got everybody to work for him. And he made his money. So it's not because he gave to God that he made money. It's just because he was a king. Are we teaching here? He was a king of the land. And if you know what kingdoms are, a king owns everything in the kingdom. Everything, including the human beings. Have you heard of the kingdom of Swaziland? Have you heard of the kingdom of Swaziland? Where the king can just stand up and look at a girl and say, bring her to my house. That's all he has married her. Any woman he wants, he just says, bring her to my house. That's all. Nobody questions it. He can take any plot of land. He can say, that business, I want it. Hand it over. Because he's the king. He's a kingdom. It's not a democracy. Solomon was the king. So it's not because he gave to God that he prospered. The man was rich by business, business strategy, oppressing poor people. Oppressing poor people. So it's not that God made him rich. Leave that thing. Go and read your Bible well. The guy had, he had everybody was his inheritance. He owned the whole land. Now look at Luke chapter 12. Let's see what Jesus will teach about these people who say you get wealthy by giving. Luke chapter 12 verse 13. Luke chapter 12 verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man... Who made me a judge or a divider? Now hold on there because I want to explain some. Pastor Price, two people did business. And after doing the business, one brother cheated the other brother in distribution. So the brother cheated came to Jesus. Jesus, we did business with my brother. You are Jesus. You are righteous. My brother cheated me. Please talk to him. Let him give me what is my own. Jesus said, ah, who made me a judge? I don't judge business matters. I'm not a divider. When it comes to money, it, it is operated by laws that are set up by men. Then Jesus looked at the person cheated. As he was about to leave, Jesus said, beware of covetousness. I am the one cheated. And you're preaching to me that the reason why it is paining me is because I'm greedy. You know what Jesus was telling him? Go and be contented with the one they have given you. Before they will take off your neck. Because there are some fights that are not worth it. You don't need to fight for everything. There are some things that are your right. You let people go. Because if you live longer, you will get double of that. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Abraham looked at Lot. Lot, why are we fighting? Why are we quarreling? Let there be no strife. Lot said, eh, because of our servants that are fighting. He said, Lord, what do you want? He said, I want all of this land. He said, you can have it. Then after Lord has taken it, Lord is feeling good that he has cheated Abraham and is going. God said to Abraham, lift up your eyes from where you are. Northward, westward, eastward, southward, including Lord and his property. As far as your eyes and see, I've given to you. When you let people go by cheating you, you recover with owning all of them. It's not worth the fight. Abraham said, my brother, Lord, let's not fight. Money is not what me and you fighting. What keeps us together is better than money. And at the end of the day, who rescued Lord? Abraham. It is still Abraham that delivered Lord because God carried Lord and put him under Abraham. Jesus said to the guy, beware of covetousness. I'm not a divider. I don't get involved in business entanglements. It is within the laws. But just be careful. 
That's the commentary of Jesus. Now, hold on and let's go back because I've not finished reading. Give me verse 14 of Luke chapter 12. And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Next verse. And he said unto them, be, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. Next verse. And he spake a parable unto them saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. He didn't say a man became rich by sowing seed. He said the ground of a certain man brought forth. So the man was given to hard work, to business. Next verse. And he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. So a very wealthy man, there's nothing wrong in having more if you work more. If you work more, make more money, nothing is wrong. In verse 18 of that scripture, Luke 12. Luke 12, 18. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Nothing is still wrong with having expansion and multi-businesses. Multi That's plain industry. Jesus said this man became wealthy by hard work. That is plain and straight. Don't let any man of God lie to you that it is his grace that is working for you in your company. It's a lie. If you work hard, you, whose grace is working on Elon Musk? Which man of God's grace is working on, 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 on Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg? No, none of them. These are just men given to industry that have mastered the laws of making wealth, whether by honest or dishonest ways. Because there are two ways to make wealth. You make it by honest means and by dishonest means. Like I said in the first service, armed robbery is an industry. It's just that it's an evil industry. Because to steal requires calculation. It requires organization. It requires, you know, teamwork. It requires planning. That's an industry. But it's a wrong industry. It's a wrong industry because for you to steal, it takes a lot of energy. Plus high blood pressure. Because you don't know whether they will catch you. Because once they catch you, it's prison. Money comes by hard work. By industry. Whether honest or dishonest. Am I teaching good? So don't let any man of God tell you my grace is working for you. Which grace? <laughs> if it is grace, I don't need to walk. I will sleep and your grace will be bringing the money to my house. That is grace now. Don't tell me my grace is working for you. Then you now tell me I have to still do something. Grace is God doing it for you and giving it to you that don't deserve it. If I'm teaching, say I hear you. Look at that verse 18 of that same scripture. Luke chapter 12. Luke 12, 18. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my bonds and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Next verse, 19. Luke 12, 19. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods led off for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. I will say to my soul, Some people just go around building houses for the future. Are you sure you will live in them? A man who understands eternity and values eternity cannot live that kind of life. You own hundred houses all over the world. Some you don't even know what is going on there. Meanwhile, you have not touched lives. You are, you are not concerned about the gospel. Because if only in this world we have hope, then we are of all men most miserable. Your approach to finances must be different from someone who is not born again. Your approach to finances must be different from someone who is not born again. Am I still teaching? I'm not saying you should not be industrious or less innovative or lazy. No. But you must never allow material things to own you. Never. Don't allow material things to control you. 
such that have the absence of them or presence of them will not reflect in your conduct. Whether you have or you don't have, it doesn't affect your lifestyle, your conduct and your character. Money is not your master. It's a bad master, but a good servant. Money is a bad master, but a good servant. The moment the absence or presence of money reflect in your conduct, you have so much to learn. Look at that, Luke chapter 12 again, verse 19. Luke 12, 19. <clears throat> and I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Next verse. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? 21. So is he that laid up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Fool means you are not thinking deep. Was this man wealthy because he was a giver? Huh? Why was he wealthy? Hard work. What about the rich young ruler in Mark 10? Was he rich because he was a giver? No, he was a ruler. Jesus told him, go and give to the poor. What did he do? He ran away because giving is, giving is strange to him. That means he made wealth without giving. That's why when Jesus said, give to the poor, he ran away. That shows you that the man did not become wealthy by giving. People become rich because of industry. And the industry can be positive or negative. So wealth is a function of human endeavor. Which can be negative or positive. It can also be a function of oppressing the poor. Oppressing the poor. So no one was taught in scripture. Not by Jesus or the apostles. Jesus nor the apostles never taught anybody in scripture that they become wealthy because they were givers. Jesus never taught anybody and the apostles never taught that. That teaching that you become wealthy by giving was coined by ministers so that it can profit them. You didn't hear that. It was coined by ministers so it can profit them. That's why in some churches, a pastor will do counseling every day or two days a week. And he wants the whole church to come for counseling. Because that is the only place he can personally manipulate you and collect. So for them, counseling is a time to collect money. You pay registration fee. You pay consultation fee. Then when he counsel you, he will not tell you the kind of problem you have. Can you give a seed according to your age? How old are you? 30. Can you give 30,000? I will try, sir. Go and bring it. If you say I cannot, he will tell you, your life is useless. At your age, you can't give an offering of your age. Then what kind of life have you lived? That is why God wants to change the things. So go and borrow and bring it. In counseling is where they make money. I went to London to preach for a church. In London, after I entered the church, the pastor didn't know. He thought... I will come and preach prosperity. I enter the church and I preach redemption in Christ. Freedom in Christ. The finished work of Christ. After the service, members were celebrating in London. Celebrating. And all of them just left. The pastor was waiting as usual for them to line up for prophetic blessing before they go. Because that is when he collects his own money. That day they all left. The man got angry. I heard he told his church leaders that I must go back. They say, why? He cannot go back. This is the kind of man we need. Can't you see yesterday nobody stayed back for counseling? The man just gave us the word of God and we are satisfied. Oh, this pastor got angry. That was how his church scattered. When I left, his church scattered. Because the people saw the truth. Then I went to another church in London. I'm sure you know that church. is even on TV. The first day I entered the church and preached the freedom in Christ. Ah, the man was angry. After the service, he came to my hotel the following morning, very early. He said, excuse me. Don't you do deliverance in your church? I said to him, what is deliverance? He said, that is, you know, you know people have a lot of problems. People have a lot of problems. And people are bound. So don't you do deliverance for them? I said, what I preached yesterday was deliverance. He said, no, don't preach that kind of thing here. The people will not come again. And the people will not give. Tell them they are bound. 
tell them about witches, wizards, and problems so that they can look for us to make money. I say, ah, that's not why I came. I came to free the people. And if you don't want me to free them, I'll go back to Nigeria. I have my return ticket. He said, go back. That's how I went to the airport, boarded my flight, and came back. He said, and for you to spoil my members with freedom, go back. I came back. I came back. Why will I stay and preach in a church where I cannot preach the truth? Just because you want money in your pocket. I'm telling you something. So some of them are looking for how to, 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 to empty your pocket for their personal profit. And they twist scriptures to do it. Am I teaching here? See, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. But I cannot, I cannot in all good conscience lie to you to collect your money. Somebody came to me somewhere with money, good money. Nailed down, Papa, Papa, I want to tap into your grace. He dropped the money and said, no, 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 no. It's not palm wine. They don't tap grace. It's not palm wine. Take your money, take your money. I don't collect that kind of money. He said, but I want to give you, I said, two things. If you want to give me to appreciate what I do for the body of Christ, I will collect it. But if it is to tap grace, please go with your money. He said, no, no, no. It is for the labor you do in the body of Christ. I said, bring it quickly, bring it. If there's more, if there's more, add more. Am I teaching good? I said, am I teaching good? Nobody thought that they became rich. They became rich by giving. No apostle, not even Jesus. So when you are covetous, when you are covetous, you will like that type of teaching. Give, so, so, pay your tithe. Pay your tithe. If you don't pay to God, you must pay to Satan. You must pay tithe. Uh -uh. And you know what? Let me tell you a secret. Most of those pastors don't pay their own tithe. They collect your own because they know it is not true. But if it was true, why don't they pay their own? Most of them don't pay. They just keep collecting from you because they are the Melchizedek. Am I teaching good? Don't let any pastor keep you under yoke for tithing. Tithing is not New Testament. In the New Testament, we give above 10%. 10% is too small for a people that know Jesus. Am I teaching good? I've just made new enemies. Who cares? Don't ever give under fear. Don't ever give under emotional compulsion. Don't ever give in promise of a return to that giving. In 1 Timothy 6, 17, look at the way brother Paul said to Timothy to charge them that are rich. He said, charge them that are rich in this world. That they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Next verse, 18. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, Willing to communicate. Willing to communicate. I will never trade with the gospel. I will never make merchandise of this gospel. This gospel is so precious. It has saved my soul. It has saved my life. And I owe Jesus the loyalty to preach it in his purity so that others can be saved. When it is corrupted, it lacks the potency to save. When it is diluted, it lacks the power to deliver. So I will not compromise the integrity of this gospel. I will preach it in all of its honesty. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. So these people, you say, charge them that are rich. Was it because of giving that they became rich? No. They became rich by industry, ideas, innovation, creativity. That's why I was telling them to give. You don't become rich by giving. You become rich by endeavor, which could either be positive or negative. Or by inheritance. By what? There are some of you, your parents, when they lived their life, and they had a lot of wealth, a lot of houses in Lagos, Abuja, London, USA, and they died and handed over everything to you. you that one, you wake up with wealth. You just woke up with wealth. 
You don't have to go through what people go through. You only learn how to manage it and how to increase it. Am I communicating? But some of us that had to scratch the ground to find where to put our leg, uh, we have our journey. And we have to work hard too so that our children will not be beggars. We have to put an end to that circle and start a new circle. And it comes by hard work. It comes by industry. It comes by end of all. It comes by, you know, strategy. It comes by taking advantage of opportunities. It comes by all of that. Teaching good? Yeah. It comes by all of that. You don't become rich by giving. So these people, Paul was telling them, be rich in good works. They didn't become rich by giving. Hard work, inheritance, and of course, situation and circumstances. Like I said in the first book, in the first service, can you imagine how much wealth Zoom is making because of Corona? Everybody's on Zoom and everybody in the world is paying. Meetings, conferences, churches, people are all on Zoom and you are paying. See, as the world locks down, people are becoming billionaires, trillionaires. Why? Because circumstances and situations are involved in affecting economic forces. Circumstances and situations. So don't let any man of God lie to you to take advantage of you. We are rich because we are industrious. We are rich because we are given to productivity. Sometimes it is the country that determines the wealth of their citizens. Sometimes a country can make it hard for you to succeed. Are we together here? Yes. Sometimes opportunities in a nation you find yourself in can hinder you from making a headway. That's why when opportunities open for doctors abroad, you see Nigerian doctors running, escaping, because their counterpart doctors abroad who don't work as hard as them are making much more than they are making. They are appreciated and there are a lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. I was just watching, I told you I did a study on Elon Musk a few days ago. They say in his company, apart from the fact that he pays his people good wages, that the magic of his company is not the wages he pays. It is he buys stocks for every staff. So all the staffs are becoming millionaires by stock, not by salary. And that's why they are all giving to work. The man is making millions per second of dollars under the lockdown. That's why the guy wants to go to Mars and go and create a planet for the rich in Mars. They don't want to live here with you again. <laughs> you know, when a man has too much money, he starts thinking of how he can bring the moon to his compound. <laughs> I'm not joking. The guy is planning to go to Mars to go and see how, I think they said the first spacecraft has landed in Mars. The first one has landed to see the possibilities of human life. The first one has landed and he plans to create more ship shuttles that will take people, space shuttles, that will take people from the earth to Mars to go and live there or to go on vacation. They are already thinking ahead. Would you have known that uh, 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 internet will be so available that by data you can be doing FaceTime, by data you can do conference call. After the first service I went to my office and I went on Zoom and I saw the whole Port Harcourt church, they were all sitting down and they were seeing me and I prayed for them. I spoke to them real time. That's technology. Many years ago that could not have been possible. But people that are thinking and people that have money, they are not tongue talkers, they are just thinkers. Have created a world that benefits all of us. Am I talking to somebody here? You say, I, I, I'm waiting for the Lord. You will waste. You will waste because the Lord will, has been waiting for you since. So you're waiting. The Lord is waiting. Everybody's waiting. Stand up and do something. Somebody say, well, I'm waiting for a white collar job. You will, poverty will deal with you. You will never get a white collar job like that. So whatever your hand finds to do, do it. If you are waiting for a dream job, get an immediate one for daily sustenance so you don't become a nuisance begging brethren. There is dignity in labor. Even if you are a laborer, breaking ground, at least you have your own money. The gospel of Christ does not promote laziness. There is no future for a lazy man. Get a job. Don't be irresponsible. If you have to push truck, push it. 
If you have to go to car park and help people carry their bag, help them and carry it, at least in a day, you will have 2,000 naira. And 2,030, that's 60,000. You are any more than some people working in companies. You just give yourself to hard work. Some of us is pride. How can they say Baba Ogale is carrying luggage? And how can they not say when Baba Ogale is a beggar? Which is better? Baba Ogale a beggar or Baba Ogale carrying luggage? Ah. Cocky pride. Pride that goes nowhere. Pride that smells is what is dealing with you. See, I'm a graduate. Graduate? Graduated from what? Poverty? You are a graduate and you have been waiting for seven years, no work. You are still eating your father's food and you are a graduate. No, you wasted time in school. Because if you are really a graduate, you wouldn't have been waiting for seven years. You would have created something. If nobody employs you, create something and employ yourself. I saw a man in Benin that has a truck, a very nice truck. He's a graduate. He's a banker, but he doesn't have a job. So he has a nice truck. He wears suit and tie, well ironed. And then he will push tomato with, with apples, fruits, and be going around. And then people see the kind of person carrying it. They keep buying. And then BBC interviewed him. BBC. They said, why are you doing this? He said, I'm a banker. So since banking didn't give me a job, I decided to create a job and use the same dignity I will use for banking to sell tomato. He's going around with his tomato every day, making, making money and taking care of his family. You are sitting down there with Queen English, with poverty from the village. Queen English, poverty from the village in the pocket. What a combination. What a combination. What a combination. This is a father talking to his children. If the children are here, can I hear a powerful amen? Tell your neighbor, go get money, go make money. Go and make money, get busy. Whatever your hand finds to do, so go looking for something you will find. He that seek it, find it. Sit down, let me talk to you. When I was in school, my father could not pay my fees because my father was a pastor and his church was not paying him. What did I do? Every holiday, I go to farm. Because there was government farm where students are employed during holiday. So we all go to farm. I go to farm 5 a.m. Silas, 5 a.m. Eh? And I will farm till 5 p.m. And under supervision, at the end of the day, your waste is paining you. Your hand if I shake you at that time, you will think you are driving from Uyo to Calabar. <laughs> my hands. That is why today that my hands are soft is the grace of Jesus. These hands, there was no hope of softness. It was so hard that if I slap you, you will require medical attention. So because of that, I never slap people. I was going to farm and pay my school fees till I finished school. Till I finish school. So a man that farms to pay fees. After graduating, you think life will be hard for him? The same way he paid fees, you will know how to navigate. The same way. I was farming. And I would come to school, pay my fees, help some people, and provide food for the, for the fellowship. Because I was in the campus leadership. And brethren, when they are hungry, they come to my house. So we will cook. My house was a cook, cooking place for brethren. So when I'm going on vacation, I know next time, when we come back, brethren will be hungry. I will farm and farm while other students are on vacation, playing games, playing football. I'm in the farm toiling, toiling. God saw me responsible early enough and brought me to the ministry and has blessed my life. I'm not ashamed to talk about it. It gives me joy to know that that is how God has helped me in my life. Some of you cross your leg and sit down. I'm trusting the Lord that a multinational company will come to town. And I will send the application. Yes, my brother. It will come maybe when you are 75. But it will surely come. It will surely come. Wait for it. <laughs> 
And somebody said to me, uh, uh, what about Isaac? Isaac sowed, and in that year, he reaped a hundredfold. Question, what did he sow? Isaac was a farmer. He went and dug the ground and put rice and put corn. That's the sowing. And if a man plants seed and sow farm, by the end of the year, he will have harvest. That's what that scripture means. It doesn't mean anything more than that. So any preacher twisting it to tell you if you give money, you reap, is a lie. It's a lie. Go and read that scripture. He was talking about Isaac's profession, that he was a farmer. And when farming time started, he farmed. And at the end of the year, the farm brought harvest. He wasn't talking about giving to get. It's fraud. Abraham too was a hardworking man. Abraham, that's why, and Abraham also was, was a dubious businessman. I'm talking about Abraham. That's why the Bible, all the Bible says we should learn from Abraham is his faith, not his business. Because at one time when his business went down, because in business, market forces can make your business go down and can make your business go up. And that's why in Abraham's life, there were up and downs in his business because he was a businessman. One time his business collapsed. He used his wife to play tricks on one man. He used his wife, played tricks, and the man gave him compensation. And the compensation on top of his wife's head was what they call rich. That's dubious. Two times, Seth. He gave his wife two times to another man. And then when the man discovers his wife, he was sorry. He said, okay, oh yeah, settle me, settle me. The man said to him. <laughs> Very dishonest. Abraham was, that's why we don't copy anything from Abraham other than his faith for righteousness. Am I teaching good here? Faith for righteousness. And Isaac saw it. Isaac also tried it. Then he had a third child, Jacob. Grandchild. Jacob started doing what you from his mother's womb. Because it was an improvement on Isaac and Abraham. So his own started early from the womb. Am I teaching? Isaac was so dubious in business that at one time when he was broke, he took Benjamin and said, take him a hand over, bring me money. <laughs> he gave Benjamin as collateral to collect money. You don't know the story. When Joseph was in Egypt and the brothers came to buy corn and Joseph said, go and bring the youngest brother. Jacob, uh, Jacob said, uh, okay, if the only way to get money is to take Benjamin, you can take him, let him go. Make sure you bring him over, bring the money. <laughs> they took Benjamin, dropped there and brought money. He collected that's how dubious some of those guys were. So that's why we don't copy anything from them other than their faith. We follow their faith. They were businessmen like any other person. It's not because they gave that they prospered. It's because they worked hard. It's because they tilled the ground. It's because they got involved in business. They got involved in developing skills. That's why the gospel of materialism, you don't preach it where really rich people are. If you find rich people, you don't tell them give and it shall be given. They will look at you and tell you, cool down. We know your problem. You want money? Take. Get out. You don't preach that. No. You only preach that kind of thing where poor people are gathered. Because poor people, anything that will make them come out apart from hard work, they are ready. <laughs> Meanwhile, the only way out of poverty is hard work. I'm teaching good though. Abraham was not making money by word of knowledge. Abraham was rich because he had herdsmen. Not Fulani herdsmen. No. He had herdsmen. And he had a farm. He was given to industry. Are we teaching? They were all industrious. Whether negative or positive. Never let anybody lie to you. If you like, give to Power City every day. It does not multiply your money. Did you hear that? No. It doesn't multiply your money. What multiplies your money is industry. So if you are giving for money multiplication, you are in the wrong place. That's why here we give because we have understood the love of God. And we want other people to get the same message. That's why we give. We are not giving with any motive. We are just giving because we love God. And then we work hard to make money. And we trust God for wisdom. We trust God for favor. And we trust God to help us as we get busy. Am I teaching good? Yeah. 
And the Bible, you know, warns us of boasting about what we own. Jesus called that man a rich fool because he was boasting of what he owned. Look at Revelation chapter 3. Now hold on before we read. It is so shameful when you find preachers just boasting. You know those preachers that like boasting? I just bought me a Bentley, man. Bentley. You know this wristwatch? This wristwatch. I bought this wristwatch. One million US dollars. You see my shoes? Man. If you want to prosper like me. You know those preachers? You know them? Fraud. The Bible warns us of boasting. First of all, the gospel is not you and your shoe. How does your shoe benefit me? It's already your shoe. It's not my own. And telling me about you doesn't make it my shoe. Please save my time and tell me about what Jesus has done that benefits both you and me. Paul said, we preach not ourselves. We preach Christ and him crucified. If I'm teaching good, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It's shameful. I used to do it before because I was copying them. Just be boasting and yeah, you know, man, I just, if you see the kind of hotel I stayed, I just came back, man. It was water bed. Glory to God. Where you come down in the morning and your the bed is massaging you. And I'm feeling cool. Stupid boy. <laughs> Stupid boy. Preachers should stop making boast of material things. It's a shame. It's a shame. You're boasting of your cars and things. Meanwhile, the people you're talking to, some of them cannot pay rent. The people you're talking to, and you're saying it to collect the little one they have. They can't even eat well. And you're busy boasting. Okay, if you have that much money, why don't you share it for them? Share it so that we know that there is plenty of money. But you're boasting. And after the boasting, he will say, bring. Bring. And only a fool will give to such a man. But because people are under spell, when they say bring, uh, the spell is broken. Our mumu don't do. Revelation 3.15 I know thy works. Observe what God is telling the church at Laodicea. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold, cold or hot. Next verse. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich boasting and increase with goods and have need of nothing and thou knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy an eyes with eyes salve that thou mayest see. It means this doctrine is always affirming material world. You know that teaching that always make you that, that tells you that it is your testimony that determines how close you are to God. That doctrine that tells you that the more you make money, the more it is confirmed that God is with you. It is a materialistic teaching. It is evil. Very evil. It is very evil. He says you are miserable. You are naked. You are blind. You are poor. Because only those that are miserable boast of material things. Say with me very loud. I am liberal. I am not covetous. I am not money minded. I am not materialistic. I walk in the spirit. I am godly in my thinking. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Brother Paul said, where you have raiment and you have food, be content. When you have raiment and you have food, be content. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. How does God give? God gives generously. God gives liberally without expecting anything in return. Let me round up this service. I've not finished the message, but I'll finish it maybe another day. 
Look at James chapter 2 verse 1 to 6. James chapter 2. James was not kind to rich people at all. Look at what he said. James 2, 1 to 6. Quickly. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory with respect of persons. Verse 2. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that wear the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. And you say to the poor, Stand out there, or sit here under my foot too. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and have become judges of good thought, of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, had not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he had promised to them that love him, but you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seat? This is James. He wasn't kind on the, on, on the rich. Even Jesus was not kind on rich people. Someone says, but we know the grace of our Lord Jesus. Grace means I deprive myself to make you rich. The moment you cannot see that what he was discussing there is spiritual, something is wrong with you. He became poor that you may be rich. The moment I am given to get, I become covetous. Anyone giving to get is covetous. I'm not giving to get. I'm giving so that someone's need can be met. The only need on my mind is giving. So that the need of another person will benefit from my giving. That's why many people who are used to paying tithe and first fruit, the moment they hear that tithing and first fruit is not New Testament, they just stop giving. They stop at once. Because before they were not giving to God. They were giving to their greed. They were giving to their covetousness. Because if you are giving to God, even if you discover that tithing is not New Testament, you will even give more. But they stop because it exposes the intent, the genuineness of their heart. When we stop tithing in this church and I taught you the truth, a lot of members of Power City stopped giving. They just stopped. <laughs> Everything crashed in this church. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't pay for any bills. I became so worried. Then I went to God in prayer. And I said, God, what have I done wrong? Is there anything I taught that I shouldn't have taught? Please show me what the matter is. Nobody is giving in church and we are not able to pay salaries. We can't even pay the bills of the ministry. And I was driving on the airport road. I was flying out. God didn't answer me for a few days. On the way to the airport, as I sat in the car and I was just thinking, I heard God speak to me. He said, my son, you didn't preach anything wrong. He said, you only expose the greed of your members. He said, they never give to me. They give to their greed and they give to themselves. That's why when you told them that if they don't pay their tithe, it will not be tithe. That if they don't pay their tithe, I'm not angry with them. They stopped giving because I was not the object of their giving. Their giving was to their needs, not to me. He says, so now start teaching them to know how to give to me because they love me. Not to give because they want something. And then I began to teach that in this church. And some people have come out of that stinginess and have started giving generously. Some people are still struggling in that stinginess. But they are coming out of it. Because you don't come out of stinginess overnight. It takes a bit of practice. It takes a bit of what? And there are some people, they will never come out of it till they see Jesus. Their hand is ever stick. Bam! For that money to come out, blood will have to leave them. And since we can't collect blood from you, you never give. But when your heart opens up to Christ and you see what Jesus has done, every stick disappears. Your hand becomes open towards the gospel. Glory to God. Have I blessed you in this service? I'm going to take it to another level, you know, you know, in the next service. And I want to even talk about tight properly. I want to really talk about tight properly so that you really even see the whole thing from Genesis to Revelation. That whole tight, I want to kill the monster. So that the people that are hearing me around the world who are still bound by the God of tithe will be free from the God of tithe and enjoy Christ. Are you blessed? Yes,
Stand on your feet, that's all. I still have a part of this to teach on how we give in the New Testament because I've not entered it. I hope you know. I have not entered it yet, but I'll get in there. Stand on your feet. That's all I've got for you. Uh, I have uh, asked the counselor in another few minutes, so I want to quickly get the protocols out of the way so we can answer a few of your calls and talk about a number of things. But are you blessed this morning? Are you blessed this morning? How many of you, after hearing the truth of this gospel, you don't want to give again? How many of you now you really want to give? Yeah, that's what it does. That's what it does. Lift your hands so that pastors who are watching, who are thinking that I'm spoiling market for them, they will see that this is where the real market is. Say, I want to give because I love God. I give my best to support the work of God. I didn't hear a good amen. Praise God. Lift your hands up, Father. I pray for everybody in this service online, on television, on radio, all over the world. Where everybody is hearing the sound of my voice today. Let this reality resonate in our hearts. And I decree that this revelation grows big in our hearts. Where we come to a place of generosity. A place of sincerity. A place where we give expecting nothing. A place where we give with our whole hearts. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the revelation of God's word increases in this house. That Jesus alone is seen and nobody else. That this gospel will get to the ends of the earth. Thank you for everybody that supports this ministry. All the partners, all the friends and everyone that gives to support our work. We rejoice that the blessing is upon your people. And we thank you for the blessing upon the service. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen are you blessed amen. grab a good offering let's give in honor of god's word and today is partnership service for those watching online you want to be a partner or you want an account to support this ministry partnership gives us the opportunity for you to deliberately take out of your income a part of your money and give to this ministry once a month deliberately and intentionally so that we can do the things we are doing all over the world. There's so much going on that many of you don't know. So much going on. You want to partner with us online, television, radio? We'll be glad to have you partner so we can do more to affect people and build people for the glory of Jesus. Praise the Lord. All right, so today we will pray for partners in a few minutes. Bring out your offerings. We want to give right now. Those that are doing online transfers, the banking details are on the screen. And we want to thank you in campuses, giving, giving right now. We're giving. And this is the offering you give in honor of the teachings you have just heard from the word of God. That's different from the monies you give to support your campus. This is specifically an honor offering for the word of God you have heard from me, which comes to support what we do on a global scale. And thank you for giving today. Lift up that offering to heaven. Father, we give in faith. We give with joy. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we decree that as we give, the blessing is upon this house. Everyone giving, I declare the favor of God, ideas, opportunities, favor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says that amen like thunder. Now we want to give quickly. Hit it. Let's give sharp, sharp, sharp as we give our offering. Come on.
Hallelujah. We don't have to sit because we are moving to the next segment of this service. But quickly, bring out your kingdom investments and your worship offering for this service. While you're yet standing, just quickly do that. Kingdom investments and your worship offering before we move into the next segment. Please do that quickly because time is fast spent. You have your kingdom investment with you? Do you have your kingdom investment with you? Do you have your offering with you? Lift your hands and lift your hands and thank God for the privilege and the opportunity to give for the work of God. Just thank God. Thank God. Thank God that we have this opportunity to give. We have the opportunity to give. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Every time we stand like this, we rejoice that we are not the originators of giving. Giving started from you. And so we thank you for your spirit that is in us. Your generosity is our generosity. And so we give generously this morning. And we give with delight and faith. And we give. We know that you are faithful. And we know that you make all grace abound to us also that we always have all sufficiency. We don't lack any good thing. And we abound in every good thing. In Jesus' mighty name. Every believer say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You just quickly come joyfully and quickly drop your offerings here. Kingdom investments in the baskets. Choir. truth we spare nothing in telling you the truth please stand with me i want to also quickly mention before i welcome mr michael bush as soon as ask the counselor is over i want to pray for all partners of this ministry in this building and all over the world and if by then we have signed off all the partners around the world we want you to know that we're using our people here as point of contact to pray for every one of you around the world and we want to thank you for your partnership We'll do that immediately after ask the counselor. And in campuses, please, campus coordinators, help me pray for all the partners in the campuses at the end of ask the counselor. Pray for their businesses and pray for their families and pray for them. And we are also praying for all partners worldwide from the house. All right, with Jesus joy, let's welcome Mr. Michael Bush as he comes for ask the counselor. Global Baba. The Intercontinental. Okay, while still standing with me, um, let's just open as we always do with the traditional opening announcements. The bank details, the bank details, uh, the account name is Power City International, they are free banks as usual. 
we start on this edition with UBA 139-26-465. UBA 139-26-465. Power City International remains the account name, so too for Zenith. 10, 12, 36, 59, 12, 10, 12, 36, 59, 12. Power City International, so too for FCMB, the last, but certainly not the least, bank. 29, 82, 68, 20, 28. 29, 82, 68, 20, 28. That's announcement number one. Quickly, quickly announcement number two. For sponsorship, you know, we, we're looking to get on um, as many more platforms as we can. And so what you can do is to support that in a way or two. So the number to call if you want to be a sponsor and I think a partner should be plus two, three, four if you're calling from outside the country. Otherwise, it's 0803 275 6104, or you just simply send an email or two to Dr. Ebel Damina at yahoo.com. Dr. There, of course, is DR. Final announcement for calls. I'm hoping that, um, just looking for the studio time, but I'm, I'm hoping that we'll have at least 10, 15 minutes on our hands on this edition of the program to, to allow you call in from every part of the world. The number to do that on is plus 234 if you're doing from outside the country. Otherwise, it's 0806 800. 9939. You can also send us an email or two to ask the counselor now at gmail.com or better still an SMS or two to plus two three four seven oh three six nine one eight six four two. That's the size of our opening announcements. And now my name is Michael Bush. Put your hands together for me. Thank you. My producer Pastor IJ Query, complete with the production team, all join me along, of course, with uh, the resident pastor, Pastor Prezokun and his dear wife, Uyime. They all joined me to welcome you to this edition of the program. <laughs> but the man of the moment, the set man, Global Baba, teacher extraordinaire, prolific author, Dr. Ebel Damina. Mr. Continental, Mr. Bush. So nice to see you, Global Baba. Good to see you today. So Global Baba will spend the night in um, Uganda, yes. in the eastern part of Africa. We're yes. going to be starting BS. Please be seated. Thank yes. you for standing with us. Yes. But sometimes, um, Global Baba, you rescued them. Yes. I want them to get a feel of what we go through here. <laughs> but, you know, um, Global Baba, before we get there to start this edition of the program, let's just quickly allow you to do what you always do. Let's pray Opening together. Prayers. Father, thank you for the privilege of fellowship with you and knowing you and confidence that we have that you hear us always. So we pray for Akwai Bomb State. We pray for the governor. We pray for his family that Amen. they continue to enjoy health, protection, and continue to enjoy success as they lead Akwai Bomb State into the best that God has for us. I also pray for public and civil servants. I pray for businessmen, students, market women, in this society, that everyone continues to enjoy the grace of God and that people are giving to industry, people are giving into all kinds of businesses that will bring increase and make this society a better society. We pray for Nigeria and the rest of the world that the gospel of Christ continues to grow and thrive. Souls are saved, disciples are raised, and the word of the Lord continues to gain preeminence. We give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so Global Baba will spend the night, as I said, in the eastern part of the continent, that's in Uganda. Uh, but before we get there, Global Baba, there are a number of questions, uh, especially considering that this is the, the climax of this series. Yes. A number of questions for us to take. Number one would um, be about this particular series, okay. having to teach evangelists and disciples openly. Yes. I thought that was something that was hidden from other uh, people they call non-workers of the church? If Why are we doing the, it openly? If it's in the Bible, it's not hidden. Because everybody has a copy of the Bible. Well, is it in the Bible? It's in the Bible. So if God wants, doesn't want everybody to read, he will have given us a different book for workers and a different book for the church. But everything is in the Bible. Meaning everything that is given to us in the Bible is meant for the well-being of every child of God. There's nothing that should be hidden for pastors and nothing hidden for believers. Every believer should be trained to be a pastor, a disciple maker, and a worker of the ministry. Ephesians 4, 11. He that descended, ascended, he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the training, the perfecting of the saints who will do the work of ministry. So that's why we made it open so that everybody who follows us will have the opportunity to learn and you never can tell how many of them will begin to do their job of evangelism and discipleship. 
just today, Global Baba, just earlier today, there was this big debate on a live um, radio program about whether women should be allowed to be leaders in church, whether they should be allowed to do what we're doing, for instance, and all that. I know you've answered this question when it came to should they even be, um, should women do some things, but about this debate, is that not an unnecessary debate to have, especially in a Christocentric setting? It's a very unnecessary, and it just shows that people are not minding their business. The church called Foursquare is global. It's founded by a woman. Oh, Foursquare. Foursquare is founded by a woman. A woman founded Foursquare, built it up to global level, and then left it as a legacy. The first people that preached the gospel after resurrection were women. So what are we talking about? Our part by spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters. The same Holy Ghost in a man is in a woman. And there's no restriction to who preaches. Because in the spirit, there's no male, there's no female. We're all one in Christ. The, the, the male pastor that spoke against women um, quoted uh, some Bible portion about Paul not uh, saying, I will not allow women. I. I will not allow women in a church where women were, not, were rebellious in their husband's homes. Uh -huh. He was teaching about submission to the husband. He was dealing with family. That if a woman is rebellious at home, she's not a good example to lead in the church. That's what Paul was saying. That women should learn in subjection at home by being obedient to their husband. And once a woman is an example at home, she can be an example in the church. church. Fantastic. I thought women should just put their hands together. And the men who love the women who do that. Okay, um, so Global Baba, my last question before we run through the continents of the world would be about, yes, um, I know that there are some partners, there are some people who may not even be connected to you or to Power City International who just sit in different countries of the world, buy a time on sometimes radio or TV and do some All over things. the world. In fact, yeah, a few days ago, uh, somebody called me from Mina in Niger State and said he's paying for two radio stations. Wow. We should just send him material. The broadcast is on. I hear there's commotion there now. Mm. Then somebody else paid for a broadcast in Lagos. So we're on radio in Lagos. Lagos. A woman in our Enugu campus paid for a broadcast in Lagos. Enugu. So we're on radio in Enugu. A brother in Port Harcourt paid for a broadcast in Port Harcourt. We've been on radio in Port Harcourt. I mean, so people are paying all over the world. And, you know, there's a lot going on. What about those... Um brothers uh, who were also those power citizens, some of them, some of them were just affiliates, some of them were partners or so, who also made sure they translated um, messages from here. Yeah, Have they are, heard anything from They them? are still translating and they are broadcasting it to their people. The guy in Pakistan is still yes, doing Yes, he's that. still on. They are just waiting for the team to build momentum before they get us in. And I forgot, somebody in Abuja, hmm. who is not a member of Power City, is in another church, called my pastor in Abuja and said, listen, I'm not in Power City, I'm in this church. But I believe in what Dr. Damina is preaching. So I'm paying for Dr. Damina to be on radio in Abuja. The broadcast has started. So. Global Baba, one last one, then we, we run through. I'm just wondering, but is that the correct thing to do? You, this is the right thing? The house way is, it's not the right thing. Because if it were the right thing, we would be putting out that message. Uh, he's taking his time. Time, okay. Maybe he's a leader there and he's gradually disengaging okay. or something, you know, so. Global Baba. The intercontinental. You have answers for everything. <laughs> I try. Okay, so let's, let's go to Uganda, <laughs> where we spend the night and start off. Uganda is on the eastern part of the continent. Hello, man of God. I'm Frank from Uganda. I am also a youth who loves God and I'm serving him. I saw some of your videos in which you thought that spirits cannot have sex. I watched them carefully, also researched on the matter. I got the same answer. I tried to explain it to many servants of God here in Uganda, but they are not believing me. I gave them a variety of scripts, but still they didn't accept. They claim that very many people have given testimonies that they were sexually harassed by demons, even in public with the whole world watching. What can I do for them to believe me? Please help me, counselor, as they already started calling me false prophet. God bless you. Well, that brother in Uganda is going to have a very hard time because a lot of those pastors that talk about women having sex as being possessed, that is their own way of making money. And women are gullible. Women, it's easy to collect money from women than from men. So if you keep playing that card, that because you're having sex in the dream, that's why no man is marrying you, because you're sleeping with a man in the dream, that's why you cannot retain a pregnancy. If you keep playing that script, you will keep making money from women. So now a preacher comes and says, but there's nothing like that. Jesus said, a man, a spirits don't get married. Because they asked Jesus that a man got married, 
the, the, a woman got married to a man, the man died. Second brother died, third brother died. Then they asked Jesus on the resurrection day, whose wife is she going to be because all of them had her? Jesus said on the resurrection, they are like the angels. The angels are spirits and angels do not marry. There can be nothing like sex in the dream. Sometimes we hear them talk about sickibus and incubus. It's not Bible. It's just human philosophy. It's just men trickishly looking for how to keep people in bondage, to keep collecting money from them. Whom the son sets free is free, free indeed. indeed. Once you are freed by Jesus and you, have, you are having sex in the dream, it's not spirit. It's not evil spirit. It is files. It is files you have allowed to go into your subconscious that are playing out. If you give yourself to the teaching of God's word, your mind is renewed. Those dreams will disappear with, with time. So it's not um, spirit wife or anything. Okay. Okay, so we stay on in the eastern So that brother part. in Uganda, keep preaching it. Stand for the truth. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. If you anytime are getting tempted to be afraid, play my video and gain boldness and courage. Stand for it. Eventually, truth will win over lies. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... Uh, we're staying on the eastern part of the continent, so we run from Kenya now to Zambia. I'm a Zambian pastor, Global Baba. My name is Alfred Paul Senkwe. Allow me to address you as daddy, for you are my dad indeed. Sir, I've been following you on Facebook since 2012 after my uncle told me to set you out on Facebook. Immediately, he heard about you. I was then a church secretary to the pastor of a certain Pentecostal church, Dad, I never knew I was in religion and not born again until I met you on social media and got exposed to the message of Christ. By that time, I even had severe intestinal ulcers, which I longed to be free from through medication and prayers, but to no avail. My pastor had tried to conduct deliverance on me through shooting water, oil, clothes, and mountain prayer and fasting, including seed sowing, but all to no avail, Global Baba. Dad, talking of my spiritual life, I thought I'd grown because I could preach and teach what today I can't call the gospel of Christ. And because we could conduct deliverance on people that's casting out demons, which today I can't call deliverance. Dad, I made a smart mistake of listening to your preaching on Facebook and YouTube. Oh my God. I started to notice how severe I had been lost and misled and how much my pastor and I had misled the masses vis-a-vis -vis salvation, etc. I started finding it Difficult to listen to my pastor, as I always had become sensitive to his uh, misinterpretations of the scriptures. Daddy, my wife and I stopped congregating. We started staying home frequently, listening to your messages, and in 10 days, Global Baba, we discovered myself ulcers free. I went for medical checkup. The doctor couldn't see any sign of ulcers. He asked me what happened, and I told him, Jesus has happened in me. That's right. We later found ourselves inviting friends to listen to you, and a year later, 2017 to be specific, we opened a cell, which went up to 2019 December. 2020 January, we opened a church, Christocentric Family Ministries Church. And today we have 28 full-time members and 19 part-time. Daddy, you have produced a ministry out of me. Yes, a ministry out of me. Today I decided to introduce myself to you as your son in Zambia, Luangsha district copper belt province of zambia i am requesting for your permission to be called your son in the lord sir you are father of me whatever i am today is you i don't have any other father who has been building me up in the knowledge of christ enough to produce a ministry out of me but you i always see myself with you in my dreams and in reality i see and feel you preaching to the sense through my body i feel guilty every time my wife and sons call me junior damina knowing you don't even know me or anything about me daddy your unknown son is today knocking on your door and saying, the spirit has told me you are my dad. Sincerely in Christ, Pastor Alfred Paul Senkwe, Zambia, leaves his contact phone number. <laughs> well, <laughs> Global Baba. Pastor Alfred, the door has been opened. <laughs> you are my just son. Enter. Just enter. So when they call you now, don't feel guilty. Okay. Enjoy. Just enter. Okay. Praise Our God. first caller, just as we have a new son, this caller. Hello. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, where you're calling from? Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Many thanks. Yes, go ahead. Good afternoon, Global Baba. Afternoon. Bless you. Good afternoon, Mr. Michael. Thank you. Welcome to the program. I'm so opportune 
So get your people in touch today. I'm very, very happy. Uh, Global Baba, I have some messages for you. Okay. One of them is that I want to say that I love you. Thank you. Love you too. I love your family. Thank you. My special thanks to Mommy and your children who have been helping us to have you on this stage. Thank you. Mr. Michael Bush, I want to say that I love you. I love you more. And I love your family too. Thank you. This is Jude from Holland. Oh, Mr. Michael, last time I spoke with you, I asked or requested for your email because I want to be one of your friends. That's right. But you didn't comply. comply. <laughs> but there is no problem. I want to say that I'm coming to Uyo, the right. former city, to visit you. That's right. Baba, yes. I want to tell you that I have been in part of your partners giving. I want to confess that I want to be constant giver. Thank you. So, Global Baba, thank you so much. Thank you Mr. so much. Mr. Bush, thank you so much. Thank you, Jude. And everyone making these messages to come towards us, I want to say big thanks to everyone. Thank you. See you there at you. Amen. I will come. Thank you, Brother Jude. Bless you. <laughs> that's a good one. I like the way he ended it. Yes. See you at Uyo. I will right. come. That's right. Okay, so we look forward to having you, Jude. That's and I apologize right. for those mix-ups, you know, here and there. Yeah. Okay, so Global Baba will still stay on in the central part, excuse me, in the eastern part of uh, Africa, Kenya now. Another long one, but I'm going to try to abbreviate this one. My name is uh, Mukonga Singhi. I write from Nairobi, Kenya. First of all, sirs, Dr. Damina and Mr. Bush, you are a blessing to many. May God bless you for the great work you do in the body of Christ. My question is my pastor and mentor, Dr. Abel Damina is. Okay, my question to my pastor and mentor, Dr. Damina is. I've been hearing messages that at the end, God will save the entire human race. The write-up below is from one of them who believes so. They say that there are those who have believed and are saved now. But there, is, uh, there are yet those, the unbelievers now, who would be saved, but after having undergone suffering in ages to come? Sir, if you understand my question, what is your answer? No, that's not true. That's not true at all. It's the people that preach about after rapture, there will be another world where people that are not raptured will suffer under a world ruler. There's nothing like that. So my advice, order for my book, The Last Days. It takes care of all that eschatological questions. The last days. Order for it from the office. Take time, listen, read, read through the book. It will equip you with the right answers. Okay. In a moment, a last uh, entry from the eastern part of the continent. Right now, another caller. Hello. Hello. Many thanks for joining us. Your name, where you calling from? Yeah. Good afternoon. I like to stay anonymous on air, Mr. Bush. Go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Daddy. Good afternoon. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Daddy. Yep. Daddy, please, I like to stay anonymous. I call from Muyo. All right, no problem. I have some certain things that bothers my mind, bothers my spiritual life, and bothers me as a person. Okay. One of which is, since this year, I've not been to church because I'm not really comfortable with some certain things around where I worship. Okay. Secondly, I have some family, a family rather, I met in church like four years ago. I met them as one united, lovely, nice family. I became part of their family, like a family friend to them. That is like I speak now, they are fighting themselves and not ready to make peace. It really bothers me. I am not comfortable about it, Daddy. I have talked with the both parties, talked with them, tried to find out the solution. Try to find out what the matter could be. But it's like all my effort is not um, yielding any fruit. And uh, they keep fighting, threatening themselves up to the point of one saying he's going to do something deadly and dangerous to the other. It's not making me comfortable, Daddy. Please, what do I do in regards to this? And the families, they have gone their separate ways as I speak. Well, uh, uh, you know, with all human institutions, usually uh, from time to time, once in a while, things break down. So what happens in that family is there's a situation of selfishness. There's a situation of either unforgiveness or bitterness. And usually when there's unforgiveness and bitterness, when there's offense, offense is off and ended. It ends everything. 
So what you can do is just to pray for them. You know, there's, you, you can't do more than God. Even God can't stop that because it is subject to their human will. So the best you can do is pray for them, trust God, and just keep praying for them. That's the best you can do, nothing more, until a miracle happens for them, either to be reconciled, restored, or something. Uh, you know, that's my advice. You know, sorry about it, but that's the way it goes with such cases. Okay, so we we'll stay back um, and round off our entries from um, East Africa on this edition of the program. Tanzania is our last port of call on that part of the continent. It goes like this. I provide many thanks through your progressive and current um, Holy Spirit teaching. For instance, being filled with the spirits. And um, God bless you, Global Baba. But my request to you is that just pray for me. I would like to release the good news the same way you do. Apostle Bill Meina. Morogoro in Tanzania. Oh, yeah, pray for you, and we believe, God, that you have utterance, you have boldness, that you continue to grow in grace, you grow in knowledge, that the revelation of Jesus grows big in your heart, you become an effective minister of the gospel. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Global, but because of time and lack of it, let's just leave the eastern part of the continent and go to the southern part. South Africa is our first port of call. Hello, Daddy and Mr. Bush. My name is Simon Seretse Muima. I write from Limpopo at Modimole in South Africa. After I realized Global Baba in assembly, where we met to teach the word of Christ, that we did not give according to understanding as per your teachings, we suspended giving in our assembly for 12 months in order to come to the knowledge of giving with understanding. We will resume March 2021. That's about this month. Daddy, was that the correct measure to follow? Kind regards. Yeah, it was. I mean, sometimes when you're not sure of what you're doing, stop everything until you're sure of what you're doing so you don't do the wrong thing. So it was, it's commendable, but I don't advise people to do that. But I mean, when you don't know what to do else, the best thing is to stop and be honest until you find out what to do. So it's a good thing. Okay, still, still from that part of the continent, as the southern part, Zimbabwe next. Hello, Global Baba. My name is Clay Patton Gundani. I write from Zimbabwe. I'm a pastor. Global Baba, I just want to thank you for... The work you're doing, indeed, you are the apostle of our time, sir. My family and I appreciate the work you do in our lives as well as in our ministry. Global Baba, you are teaching on the book of Revelation refers. Please, shed more light on the issue of tribulation. All along, we've been taught that rapture is not the second coming of Jesus and that there is a period between rapture and second coming, which is called tribulation. Help me, Global Baba, I'm lost. Well, the issue on tribulation is that tribulation is already going on. Many people are not aware because they don't live where tribulation is going on. I mean, churches in China are on the ground, and if you're caught in China reading the Bible, you go to prison for three, four years. All right? There are people going under persecution in the Islamic nations. Even in Nigeria, northern Nigeria, churches are being burned, pastors are being killed, believers are being mutilated, all because of their faith. So persecution is already on, and that is what keeps going on, and it, it has been on even before now. So the coming of Christ is the end of the world. And what that happens, it's over and over then. I will advise you to order for my book, The Last Days. It covers all of that issue on eschatology. Bless you. Okay, Global Baba, let's leave Africa. Because of time and lack of it, we have just a little over six minutes. To the continent of Europe, Germany. Okay, I'm told we'll take one more call. Is that there now? That caller, hello. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hello. Welcome to the program. Your name, where you calling from? Yeah. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Many thanks for joining us. Just go ahead. Your name, where you calling from? Oh, okay. My name is Smart. I'm calling from Turkey, Northern State. All right. Go ahead, Smart. Oh, okay. Um, my question is on uh, Matthew 15, Matthew 15, 24. We are, where Jesus said, say, I'm not saying, but only to the Lordship of Israel. Uh, I don't know if uh, Daddy can help us through more life because I was trying to talk to a Muslim and he brought that up that, uh, um, that Jesus was just sent to a particular people in Israel. No, when Jesus. So I, I gave him some answer, but I'm not really not satisfied. So I'm looking for a higher, uh, a higher revelation. That is to throw more light on it. When Jesus, when Jesus said that, he was talking about under, he, under the incarnation, he came to Israel to use Israel as a pattern to reach the world. That's what that means. But after that, when he rose from the dead, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
Mark 16, 15, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. So when he said that, that was before he died, that he was sent to Israel. But after he rose from the dead, he made it available to everybody because he was using Israel as a pattern to reveal his salvation plan. I have three minutes effectively on my hands, and then I must touch three continents. So Germany in Europe is number one country. So he says, hello, men of God. I'm really thankful for the beautiful work you do. I'm blessed. Thank you so much. Question, I listened to one of your programs on which somebody asked you if it is okay to get the corona vaccine, and you said yes. And it goes on to condemn that. I know I'm just trying to abbreviate it now, Global Baba, because it says that uh, it's all about the evil system, the world system trying to fight. It's not the disease don't come from God. So how many people are going to be killed by the vaccine? The whole world, right? So let them kill all of us, including themselves and their families. You took measles vaccine without knowing how it came. You took um, uh, yellow fever vaccine. Polio. You took polio. polio. You took um, uh, HN1. You took all the vaccines without thinking. It is now Corona 1 that is going to kill the whole world. Are you thinking straight? We're talking about a disease. And we're talking about people getting vaccines to help them live above the disease. Just trust God and go take the vaccine, my brother. And if you find a good one, let me know quickly so I can come and get my own. Global Barber. Yes. Okay, so we, we, we round off our trip, our visit to Europe by looking at the UK. It says, dear Global Baba, oh, Global Baba, how wonderful you've been led. I have been led by God to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Global Baba, I started listening to your messages in 2011. It was my friend who told me that there is a pastor who speaks interesting tongues and can jump on the pulpit, Global Baba, like he has springs on his feet. Am I still jumping? <laughs> <laughs> she could repeat after your tongues, word for word, and laugh because it interested her. I didn't see anything funny about it. Rather, I would listen to what you were saying after tongues. I told myself I found him. As a secondary school child, Global Baba, I read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. The Old Testament was interesting because of its stories, but the New Testament to me was like climbing Mount Everest. <laughs> because um, I only managed to read it to the end um, since I found nothing interesting in the 27 books. I decided to know God and who he really was, but it was hard. Because as you always say, many pastors do not know the Bible and they teach without having understood what the Bible is saying. I couldn't understand anything and preachings were different from what I read. They were preachings from people's experiences. I listened to different pastors on TV. I went to certain churches, but it's only in Power City, Global Baba, that I found rest because of your teachings. That's what I wanted. In the other churches, all they do is to get problems solved, which never happened. In Power City, miracles would find me while I'm re relearning. I don't think about problems anymore. Thank you so much, Global Baba. May this word that you teach reach the uttermost parts of the earth until nothing else matters. May you live long to teach the revelation of Christ Jesus to all nations. Amen. Now, how do I order your new books and how can I become a partner? Your daughter in Christ, Pauline Madeira in England. Well, Pauline, United bless, Kingdom. bless you and thank you. We'll respond to you, send you all the details for ordering books and how to be a partner. you hear from our office ASAP. Be blessed and thank you for reaching out. Okay, Global Baba, because of time and lack of it, I had hoped I'll be able to go to, yes, Global Baba, I had hoped I'll be able to go to Asia and the Americas because we still have so, so many comments coming from the rest of the world, but unfortunately time doesn't allow that. And even from the live audience, I have many, many questions. Let me promise that as soon as it's possible, we're going to come back with live um, editions of the program. Uh, taking so much deserved rest, we're going away. You yes, know. <laughs> I'm little, leading the way. A little while, we just take <laughs> a break. Absolutely. Then we come back and we we'll do some live absolutely. shows. Absolutely. So that. until then, the resident pastors, that's um, Pastor Praise and Uyimokun, I'd like to thank you, my producer, Pastor I.J. Quera, and the production team. On your behalf, this is Michael Bush. Also thanking Dr. Michael Modu. It's very nice to see him. Put your hands together for him. Even as I invite Global Barber to lead the bye-byes. Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. What a day. Thank you again. We appreciate Fantastic. you. We appreciate you very Fantastic. much. And thank you for all you do to help us get these things all over the world. Hey guys, thank you. We love you. It's always an honor to serve you the grace of God, to teach you the word of God, and to trust God to fulfill the counsel of his will concerning your life. Thank you for being a part of this. Remember, tomorrow we'll be live at 12 noon, and at 6 p.m. we will be live with the In Christ Realities. So 6 p.m. and 12 noon. The whole of the next few weeks, we're only live twice a day, 12 noon and 6 p.m., no more 10 p.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m., twice a day. And this is for everybody to take note of. Remember, we're live on uh, XLFM 1 to 3, and we're live again this afternoon on 
on you know you fm three to five and then tonight we are, we are on inspiration nine, nine to, to ten. ten heritage ten to, ten to midnight 12, yes. ten to twelve yeah. and in the mornings we are on xl five five forty five am you you don't want to miss that for a Absolutely. daily shot and then of course radio 11 Aquibon. to 1 radio acquire and the process just Continues keeps going like on that. like that we love you guys and remember to follow on kingdom life network and until we see all of you partners we love you and friends have a blessed day and be blessed goodbye from uyo nigeria amen and amen praise god glory are we blessed praise god